Bubbler Media presents Tips from the Table. With me, Cindy Harrison. Welcome everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday afternoon. I'm so glad that you're here joining me. And today we're gonna discuss about what to bring to a painting class, whether it be a single class, a um, seminar, workshops, uh, even a convention. And our convention is starting, our national convention, I should say, is starting next um, in two weeks in Daytona Beach, San Diego. It's called the Society of Decorative Painters Conference, annual conference. And that's where all the decorative painters get together and we learn, we take classes and learn how to paint in um, oils, watercolors, acrylics, colored pencils. Sometimes there's a colored crayon class being offered. I know that we have artists in New England that do it in our local New England Traditions Convention, which is held in October. Um, you can learn about values, you know, colors, how to manage color in a painting. Many times you see a painting and you say, oh, I love that composition, but those colors don't match my decor. Well, this kind of class would show you how you can change those colors to match your decor. Um, so you can learn new techniques, you can learn about the different brushes that are available and what kind of tricks those brushes could do for you. New product is there. Vendors who sell product, pattern packets, so you can recreate the same uh, pieces of art that you see hanging in their booth. You can recreate those at home. Um, hi, Katie. So any one of those things uh, is available. It's just a wonderful show. And even if you are just an art lover, you're not necessarily a doer, you don't want to paint, you don't want to colored pencil or pastels or anything, but you enjoy looking at others' artwork, you can still enjoy these conventions. And you can go to the trade floor and you can look at all the different variety of styles of art that are available to you. And um, sometimes these artists actually sell their finished work and you could buy a piece of their artwork. Um, I actually bought some Metrioshka dolls at one of these conventions. There was a vendor there who had uh, multiple different Metrioshka dolls, uh, the nesting dolls, the Russian nesting dolls. And um, I picked up a set for like $25 and it is just uh, stunning. I love it. So yeah, so there you go. So today we're gonna talk about what to bring as a painter, an acrylic painter to your painting class. This series I call, What's in Your Bag? So let me change my camera around and I will get to what's in my bag. So here is my bag. And what's in my bag? First off, I'm gonna have my handy dandy apron. I definitely need an apron so I don't get all messy. The next things I have in my bag are palette paper. And if you, this is a waxy, has a waxy finish on one side and it's paper on the back side. So if you don't have palette paper, you can use a styrofoam plate or you can use freezer wrap paper. And this is what you use to put your paint on. And, it, and because the waxy finish, the paint stays on top and doesn't get absorbed into the paper. This is a piece of graphite, which otherwise known in the, in the uh, secretarial world, and I know that's an old term, we don't use it anymore, but it's like carbon paper. So always have a sheet of that in the dark and a light, which is looks like this. And you always have a sheet of each of those on you at all times. The next thing I have 
is tracing paper just in case you need to trace some line drawing that the teacher gives you. It's nice to have this. You might not need it, but better you have something and not need it than to not have it at all. A roll of paper towel. I tend to use Bounty, but people have a variety of ones that they like. I pick up some Q-tips. This is great for correction work. If you make a mistake, you can get your mistake off with that. This lovely little container. This is actually a container to store your photographs. And I found it in Michael's um, where all their photo for scrapbooking, people keep their photos and stuff in them. So that's what this is. I always have a piece of tape, extra tape, if I need it for a reason. I just stick it on there, and it's there if I need it. Inside, I put some bubble wrap to keep all my items from flailing around inside. I have a ruler. Always good to have a little ruler on hand. This is called the stylus. It has a ball at each end, a different size. This is what you use to trace your design on using the tracing paper and the graphite paper and your surface. I have a palette knife to mix colors of paint. When the teacher asks you to mix your paint, it's always good to have a palette knife. I have an eraser to erase my graphite lines. I have a sanding disc if the teacher wants you to distress something or if what you, a uh, piece of wood that she gave you is a little rough and you want to sand it smooth, I always have that with me as well. And, and a piece of, you know, emery board for the small places I can't get into with the big pad. A pair of scissors, little handy dandy scissors. I have a pipette. This is called a pipette. It helps you to suck up water out of your water container and put water into your paint if you need to um, dilute your paint down. This is great for that. I also have a white graphite pencil. If you, if you trace your design on and it's missing some lines, sometimes it's hard to line up your tracing paper with what you've already drawn onto your surface. So I just connect the lines with this graphite pencil. A sharpener to sharpen your graphite pencil. This here is a mechanical pencil. So in a regular pencil. Why I have two in there, I don't know. I tend to like the mechanical pencils. But if you need to take notes, it's always good to have a pencil handy. I have a little E6000, a tiny tube, just in case I need to glue feet onto a box or anything like that. Credit card. I use this sometimes if I'm decoupaging paper on my surface. I use this to scrape it down to make sure like wallpaper that it, there's no air bubbles in it. So that's what I use this for. Or sometimes you can use this instead of a palette knife if you're in a pinch to mix your paints together or scrape your paints off and put it somewhere else. Like in little cuppies to take home. This is one of those binder clips. Put that in there. And some people use this, they turn it around this way and they clip it to a surface. And then if they have a photograph, they stick the photograph in here so they can look at it while they're painting. So you can have your photograph up while you're painting and see it. And that's a nice, easy way of doing that. I shared some of these things. Yeah, I shared these things last week. But because we may not have kept the video on the computer, I have, I'm resharing them because I really think for beginners or people going away to paint for the first time, it will help you 
to hear it more than once. I know it helps me. Reiteration always helps me. Little paint cups you can get sometimes at the dollar store. And this is when you are finishing the class. The class is, you know, class time is ending, but you need to finish it. You need to work on it more when you get back to your hotel room or when you get back home. And you may not have the colors that the teacher has supplied you. You can pour your paint, some of that paint into here and take this home and finish your project. So that's very important to have some of those on. I also have a water basin. Mine's kind of used, as you can tell. But I always keep a water basin in my bag and paper towels to stop up any extra water. And again, more protection for the stuff that's in my bag so the water doesn't get all over everything. This is what I mean by regular supplies, definitely. But you can go into your catalog and if you're going to a convention, the catalog will tell you what they deem as regular painting supplies. But this is this is pretty basic, pretty basic. This is my paintbrush holder. You can check when you're taking a class with a convention at the back of your convention book, they usually tell you by class number what kind of tools you will need beyond your basic painting supplies. Each class will have different requirements. Some classes you'll need to have, you know, a dry brush, and this is a dome brush. Some classes you'll need to have a deer foot brush. Other classes may need a fan brush or um, a filbert brush. So, you know, rake brush. This makes nice beards and hair because the the hairs of the brush are, are thinned out in different lengths. Um, and this here, this is nice to have too. This is a pen style eraser. So you can get into smaller places than using the big eraser. So I, I have a very size of flats and these are considered flat because they're flat this way and squared off that way. I like to have that as a definite, everyone should have those. I have also some rounds and some liners. And the difference between that is a liner is thin and the rounds are thicker at the ferrule and have more hair. But have a variety of liners and rounds. I have a few of these brushes that are stiff white bristles so that I can do dry brushing with them. I always carry this yucky, yucky brush. It's very stiff. This is what happens, if you can see this. All this gunk right in here, this is what happens when you don't clean your brush out well. And if you just let all the mediums you use, acrylic paint, varnish, sealer, whatever you use, and you let it dry up in there, that's what it looks like. It should look like this. So I clean these brushes with ivory soap and water. There are brush cleaners out there. You are more than welcome to purchase and use, but you can use Dawn dish soap. You know how they say on the commercials, Dawn cuts the grease, right? That's, that will help you cut the grease. Not that acrylics grease, but if you did oils, that cuts the grease. Um, a question here is, how long have I been an art teacher? Well, I've been an art teacher for probably 25 years. Um, before that, even as young as elementary school, I would always help other people with whatever their needs were. I always wanted to be a teacher. So whatever I could do, I, I would be there helping people. I would be the first done and the first to say, oh, everybody, don't make the mistakes I made. <laughs> and that's how I got to be where I am today. I just love sharing my knowledge with people. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, I have a mop brush, dry brush, big brushes for base coating. So yeah, that's, you know, 
so the filbert, the difference between a flat and a filbert is, you can see here, the filbert has round hairs and the flat is squared off. So that's what this is, is a filbert. Not, you know, that's not something that I necessarily use in, in every one of my classes. I have a basic brush set that I talk about and I sell, but pretty much it includes a couple flats, a couple liners around, and uh, maybe an oval. But I think this set is what I travel with. And this pretty much gets me through most every class that I teach and or that I take. And again, check the back of your catalog. And if there's something that they require that you don't have, um, then you can purchase it from them most likely. How should someone invest in these supplies to get started? I recommend me, my way of teaching is I want to not break your piggy bank. So I start off with as little as possible to get you started. Like I said, the basic, the basic set I'm looking at, if you did something like these three brushes, I might add a fifth one, but a four, I can't even, I can't even count. These four brushes will do a lot for you. You've got your base coating, you get your filling in your design and maybe adding some shading and highlighting liner for detail and round for the smaller spot, small areas to base coat. So that pretty much will get you in most through most classes, most project projects. And I myself have bought brushes that I still have in the wrapper because I thought at the time they showed them to me that was great. I needed them and then I get them home and I have no idea what they were for. So I really don't want anyone to invest in a product that they don't need at this time. You can um, contact me. Bubbler is going to have a, a website and an area where you can contact me and I can help you decide what your needs are and then turn you to the right place to purchase them. Um, I like carrying around a name tag with me because it's easier for the teacher to, you know, it's helpful. You know, teachers can't remember everyone's name sometimes and it's helpful to have that on so they can call on you if they have something specifically to tell you. Tissues, never a bad thing to hold on to. Business cards, Got you know, someone wants to get a hold of you. How are they going to do it? Just pull out a business card and hand it to them. I have spoons because sometimes I spoon out medium and give it to the students, but that's you know, here and or there for you guys. Definitely masking tape, like you saw, I had some blue tape on my photo container with my goodies in it. But if you can have a roll of masking tape because. Somebody will need tape. Purell. This is good because a lot of times people get paint on their clothing and they don't want it on their clothing. So you can immediately take some of this and start, you know, applying it to your clothing to get the paint out. Um, another reason to have this is if you're not going to be able to get to a sink and wash your brushes out right away. Wash them out with this if you've got a lot of paint in the brush and you don't want it to dry in there. Wash it, your paintbrush out with this. And then when you finally get back to a sink, then you can finish washing them. So this is a good product to have. Let's see what else is in my bag of goodies. I'm thinking that we've reached the end of the bag. The only other supply that I would add to this, and let me change my camera. So, so the only other thing that I can see adding to this that I don't have in here is a blow dryer. 
many times the bag is not heavy. The bag is not that heavy, honestly. Everything in here is pretty lightweight. So, I mean, these don't weigh anything. <laughs> Believe you me, I, I tend to have all my stress in my shoulders. So if it was heavy, I, I wouldn't be able to carry it around. And th this is all very light. Have I actually weighed it? No. but So blow dry is a nice thing to add to it to have a blow dryer because sometimes you are in a class and the teacher might be moving at a little bit more of a pace than you're used to painting. Everybody works at a different pace, but the teacher can't necessarily slow down for the people who work fast or speed up for the people uh, the other way around. Slow down for the people who are a little slower and speed up for the people who are faster. She has to go at a, a pace that she knows she can get the project done or get the points across that she's trying to teach you in that time frame. So sometimes it's nice to have a blow dryer and you can go and zap your acrylic paints and blow dry them fast so that you can then go on to the next step. So if you have the ability to bring a travel blow dryer, then I would definitely recommend that. I think it's an awesome um, tool to help you succeed in your class. So, any questions? I think that I went over, again, some of the basic basics. I say everything is written in pencil because every teacher has different requirements in what they deem, you know, how they define the word regular. And I think that I tried to cover the basics of the, what most teachers would consider to be their regular painting supplies. Um, but always, always, if ever in doubt, ask. There's no stupid questions. You've heard people say that many times. Teachers are approachable. Most of the time, they'll have their email or some way to contact them in the back of the catalogs on their pattern packets, in the books that they that you buy at the store. And you can approach them and say, what did you mean by ABC, XYZ, whatever it is. And they will respond to you. Um, and if they don't, mm, you know, <laughs> let's see. Next question, where can I find classes like the ones you are talking about? Okay, so. Like I said, there's going to be a convention coming up in two weeks. I'm going to be in Daytona Beach, Florida. That is uh, the, I don't know, 40-something, I should know better, uh, Society of Decorative Painters annual conference that is loaded with classes. And you can find those on decorativepainters.org, their convention. There is a New England Traditions that will be a New England Traditions uh, Convention in October that I also go to in Marlboro, Massachusetts. It's the October 4th through 9th. I think it's the it's before the Columbus Day, uh, during the Columbus Day weekend. And that is newenglandtraditions.org. Next week, I would like, uh, I'm going to start from the beginning and treat you all as beginners. And next week, I'm going to talk about the different brushes and I'm going to show you how those different brushes work and why you would choose one type of brush over another. So I'm going to take this program week by week and um, build your knowledge and understanding for decorative arts and maybe even hopefully inspire you to pick up a paintbrush and join us. I have an afternoon show and understanding for decorative arts. I have an afternoon show on Sundays called Paint with Heart. It will be replayed on Bubbler um, on Thursday nights that you can join us and paint with us, and we would love to see you. What else? I think that's it. Um, any other questions? Why do I love to paint? I love... Um, it, it's kind of a self esteem, motivational boost. When you start to create something that 
you see it coming along, it's exciting. It's exhilarating. It, it's rewarding. It's a rewarding kind of uh, hobby, I find, because as it builds, it excites me more to see it finished. And when I finish it and look at it and I say, oh, my goodness, I did that. That's amazing. And not only that, you show it to your loved ones and your friends and they'll look at you and say, you did that. That is phenomenal. And I think everybody, I want to share that feeling with everybody. Everybody should feel that way, that that you created something out of a blank piece of paper, canvas, wood, whatever it is, and that somebody is, you're proud of yourself and they're proud of you. I can't imagine a better self-esteem booster than that. So again, I hope you all enjoy it. Our little painting lessons and this tips and, and uh, from the table will always be about learning about something new, whether it be a brush, a product, or a technique. And then take those with you when you go to your classes or when you start creating on your own. So let's, I know I'm gonna quit a little early, but if you don't mind, I will do that and we will play our credits and that'll be the end of that. So take care. Ooh, not yet. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> this we're getting used to new, um, new system with the software. So it goes to the end or it goes to the blue screen, I should say. When you're ready. ready. Yeah, go to the blue screen. That's my, my woman behind the curtain. So when we go to the blue screen, we'll do the outro, and then next week we'll actually have um, some music to go with it. Are you going to switch? There you go. So thank you, Bubbler Media, for letting me hear. Okay, I ended it. Okay. <laughs>